in this video we're going to learn the concept of loops and let me quickly set up a for loop I'll quickly set it up and I'm going to run this code and then explain to you what what is happening here okay so what I've set up is a for loop this might seem complicated to you I'm going to explain this in a bit but when I run this code you can see that the word hello has been output three times okay basically if you see this code the print statement has only been written once but this got executed three times let's now try and understand how this code works so this statement here we'll call this the header statement right this is where we're defining uh, uh, all the parameters related to the for loop uh, this keyword for basically indicates that this is a for loop right this is x is basically a variable okay and that's why you can see on the right hand side I have shown x as a memory location right I've given it the name of x and we can store values inside of this memory location remember variables are named memory locations so uh, x is a variable and this range here is telling us that the range of values that the that the variable x can take are 0 to 3 where the 0 is the starting value of x and this 3 is the stopping value of x this 3 is the stopping value of x okay so how does this work for now there's only one instruction inside the for loop and that is the print instruction okay and remember all of these uh, instructions that we have this header as well as this print statement which is part of the for loop are going to be executed by the CPU okay so I'm going to refer in terms of CPU as to how this code is being executed okay so what's happening is that the CPU is first going to set the value of X to 0 because remember this is the starting value so in this storage uh, the value of X will be set to 0 by the CPU okay and then the CPU is going to check whether the value of x lies in this range 0 comma 3 right remember this is the range this is the range of values right so the cpu checks whether x is within the range and x is within the range x has a value of 0 right now which is between this range so the cpu decides that we can run this loop to run this loop the cpu goes inside the loop and executes all the instructions that are there inside the loop right now there's only one instruction which is the print instruction right so what is the cpu going to do it is going to print the word hello in the output window right because that's what this instruction print instruction is all about right that's what this print instruction is saying once this has happened there's something called a built-in counter in for loops there's something called a built-in counter that counter is running in the background okay that counter is running in the background and that counter will automatically change the value of x it will increment the value of x by one so the value of x will be changed by the background count by, by the built-in counter that's running in the background to one okay so once the built-in counter has taken its action once it has incremented the value of x the cpu now goes back up right to decide whether this loop is going to run again or not so when the CPU goes back up, it checks the value of X, which is like in this storage. It checks whether this value of X, which is one right now, if that value is within the allowed range of values, right? And it is between zero and three. So the CPU decides that this loop is going to run again. So CPU goes inside the loop, executes this print instruction, right? It executes this print instruction. The word hello is output in the uh, output window. And then after all the instructions inside the loop, which we only have one right now, but there could have been more instructions inside the loop besides this print statement. So after all the instructions inside the loop have been executed, the built-in counter comes into action. It changes the value of X by one. So instead of one, now the value of X becomes two. Now the value of X becomes two. Once the built-in counter has done its job, the CPU, goes back up to decide whether this loop is going to run again or not 
So it checks the value stored in x, which is 2 right now. And it checks if that value is within the given range, right? Which is what? 0 to 3, right? Checks whether x is within this range. And because x is within this range, the CPU goes, decides to run the loop again. It goes inside the loop and it executes all the instructions that are there inside the loop. For now, we only have this print instruction, just one instruction. It executes this instruction. The word hello is output in the output window. Then the built-in counter kicks into action. The value of x is changed from 2 to 3. And the CPU decides again. And the CPU goes back up again, sorry. It, it goes back up, up again to, to decide whether the loop should run another time or not. So it checks, the CPU checks the value of x. It sees that the value of x is 3. It checks the range and it notices that 3 is the stopping value. 3 is the stopping value. So the CPU decides to stop this loop because we've reached the stopping value. Okay. And uh, so the loop stops. Therefore, hello is only going to be output three times. Now, based on what I've discussed with you, you can understand that the first time the loop ran, the value of x was 0. The second time the loop ran, the value of x was 1. The third time the loop ran, the value of x was 2. But as soon as the value of x became 3, the loop stopped running. Just to demonstrate that the value of x really was 0, 1 and 2 when, we, when the loop ran, I'm going to use this print statement. And besides printing this word hello, I'm also going to print the value stored inside this memory location x. Okay. So each time the loop runs, not only will hello be printed, but the value of x is also going to be printed besides it. Right. So if you run this, you can see that when the loop ran, the first time the value of x was 0. The second time the loop ran, the value of x was 1. And the third time the loop ran, the value of x was 2. So one thing we can do is we can change these values and see uh, how the loop runs. Uh, the basic formula to figure out how many times the loop is going to run is to take the stopping value, subtract the starting value, and that should give you the number of times that the loop is going to run. Right, so this loop is going to run three times. Right, we can see that. Uh, we can change these values. So if we change these values to four and nine, so the starting value is four, the stopping value is nine. Now our equation becomes nine minus four. Basically, this loop is going to run five times. So if I run this, you can see that the loop ran five times. Not only that, but you can see that the first time the loop ran, the value of x was four, which is how it should be, right? Because this is the starting value of x. And the last time the loop ran, the value of x was what? 8. After 8, the, uh, the built-in counter in the background would have changed the value of x to 9 and the loop would have stopped, right? So I hope this is making sense to you. You can play around with these values uh, and see, you know, if the loop is uh, running as per your expectations. By the way, this is a variable, right? X. Uh, we could give it any name. It doesn't necessarily have to be x. So you can try y here or z here or you can try something like num here, right? You can give this variable any name and then, you know, we can print the value stored inside num, right? So instead of x, we could have used a different name here also and the code is going to run fine. So if I uh, run this code, you can see, you know, uh, there's no difference in how the code runs. The only difference is that we chose a different name. Uh, to store this range of values, right? We Instead of x, we chose num as the name of our variable. So this is going to be the name of our storage in which this range of values will be stored, right? Okay, we can try a few more things here. Uh, we can, for example, we can use a variable called y, give it a value of two. We can declare a variable called z, give it a value of six, right? And instead of directly mentioning the values of, uh, instead of directly specifying values such as 4 and 9 here uh, as a range, we can actually use these variables. We can use y as the starting value, z as the stopping value. In fact, you know, what we are doing is we are telling the CPU that the starting value is stored inside variable y. So the CPU can go to the storage, check what value is stored in there, which is 2. So this is going to be the starting value. And then the CPU can also check the, step, uh, the stopping value uh, from this storage Z, which is going to be what? 6. So the range effectively becomes 2 and 6. So this loop should run 4 times. 
if I run this you can see that the loop is running as per expectations the starting value is 2 and the loop in fact did stop finally when the value of num became 6 remember you know this time this range of values belongs to the variable num we changed it from x right instead of x we are now using num as the variable in which the range of values is going to be stored okay let's try a few more things uh, one of the things that we can try is by only specifying a single value here like 4 okay so I haven't specified a range of values I've only specified uh, one value which is 4 and in this case 4 is going to be treated as the stopping value in this case 4 is going to be treated as the stopping value and the starting value by default is going to become 0 okay so if I run this you'll see that the loop runs four times the starting value was by default picked to be 0 so in case you see a loop like this which only has one value here in the range then this is the stopping value and the starting value by default Python chooses Python chooses to be 0 so now we'll have a starting value of 0 okay and I can do it like this too right I could just say z equals 4 and you know I can simply write z here right so I've only specified one value I've specified the variable z the CPU will check what value is stored inside z which is 4 so this value of z will basically be the stopping value and by default Python will choose the starting value in this range to be 0 okay so Python will choose the starting value of num to be 0 so that's how it works okay so if I run this even now this loop is going to run four times right because the value inside z becomes the stopping value if I change this value to 2 for example this loop will run two times right because the stopping value was what 2 and you can notice that the starting value was 0 right because we are we're printing the value of num also right so num had a starting value of what 0 right so we can do this and what if I instead of specifying a fixed value here uh, of 2 what if I was to do something like this what if I was to take an input from the user right through the keyboard I can just leave a message here uh, you can say something and like enter the number of times you want to run this loop so basically this time the user will enter a value through the keyboard that will be converted into an integer value and saved in Z and now the CPU will make this value stored inside Z to be the stopping value so if I run this code uh, I'm being asked for a value right so if I type for example 5 here then z will get what value this z will get this value of 5 right because this is what I just typed through the keyboard I'm going to hit the enter button and you'll see that the loop runs 5 times the starting value once again by default is what 0 because there's no starting value mentioned here because there is no starting value mentioned here then this value the only value that is mentioned inside these brackets in the, inside these parentheses uh, this becomes the stopping value and now you can see that this uh, with this kind of a code setup you can see that the value of z is going to be decided by the user right so whatever value the user inputs is basically going to decide how many times this loop is going to run uh, the starting value is going to be zero so effectively you know our equation is going to become what z minus 0 will tell us the number of times the loop is going to run if you remember this equation this is the stopping value which is stored inside z and by default python has chosen the default value to be 0 right so this becomes a range and this effectively means you know that the loop will run uh, z minus 0 number of times right okay i hope this concept is clear let me run this code one more time I'm going to specify a value of 3 here I'm going to run this and we can see that this loop ran three times so far we've only included one instruction inside the loop what if we were to include two instructions so let me add another print instruction right uh, and if I run this code you'll see the loop runs three times and each time the loop runs both of these instructions are executed so first time the loop ran the value of num was 0 and we can see hello and bye bar output then the next time the loop ran the value of num was 1 and so you know we got this output hello 1 and bye and the third time the loop ran hello 2 
and BIOS output. All right, just to reinforce the concept that we discussed early on, right? The first time the loop is going to run, right? Num is going to have a value of zero, right? That's the starting value. That is the starting value we have, and the CPU is going to check if num has a value which is within our range, which is zero and three, right? So because zero is currently within the range, this loop will run. Both these instructions are going to be executed. You're going to see hello zero and by being output in the output window then the built-in counter will run in the background it's going to change the value of num from zero to one after both instructions have been executed the built-in counter is going to change the value of num and it's going to become one and then the cpu is going to go back up and check you know whether the current value of num uh, is within range so it is within range right now so the CPU decides to run the loop again and when this loop runs again both of these instructions are executed again remember the first time the value was 0 now num has a value of 1 this loop runs again right and both of these instructions are executed that's why we see hello 1 and by big output right and similarly you know built in counter will now change the value of num to 2 and the CPU will go back up to decide whether the loop runs again which it is going to run so when the loop runs again with the value of 2 right num has a value of 2 so this instruction and this instruction both will get executed we'll see i don't have enough space we'll see hello to and by being output right and then the built-in counter will kick into action it will change the value of num to three and the cpu will go back up to decide whether this loop is going to run again but the cpu will see that this value has reached the stopping value so the loop is going to stop so as many instructions are there inside the loop each time the loop runs all of those instructions are executed this time we only have two instructions and after all of these instructions are executed, the built-in counter kicks into action, changes the value of num, and then the CPU decides whether the loop is going to run at other time or not based on the current value of num. Alright, so one more thing that I want to tell you about is indentation, okay, which is basically the spacing you can see we have introduced, right? So after the header statement, right, after this header statement for the for loop, all instructions that are to be included inside the for loop are using this spacing here to the left right so there's some space we've introduced to the left and we have done that by using the tab key right so if I just remove the indentation I'm going to hit the tab key and introduce the indentation okay this indentation is very important all instructions following the for loop or I, I should say all instructions immediately following the for loop okay all instructions that appear after this statement immediately after this statement this header statement must have indentation must have this spacing to be part of the for loop okay so for example if i was to remove this indentation this print statement is outside of the for loop and this one is inside the for loop okay so if i run this code you can see that this print hello statement was executed multiple times Whereas this print by statement, because this was outside the loop, has been executed once only. So remember, you know, this indentation is very important. So I'm going to use indentation here and I'm going to include another instruction such as print good. And then, you know, another instruction which says print this is Tuesday. All right. So these three because of indentation are part of the loop and this because it has no indentation is outside of the loop and remember indentation is using the is, is done using the tab key all right so that's the amount of space that you need to introduce so if i run this code i think you you have an idea now uh, these three are being repeated uh, multiple times hello by good hello by good and this instruction this is tuesday the print statement for this is Tuesday that instruction got executed only once because this was outside the loop 